put the equation in, right? So I want you doing this on your graphing calculator as we do this together. All right, so you're going to hit that Y equals button. Okay, now put in the equation X to the third minus X plus one. Put it in. All right, so you're going to hit the X button. We're going to go to the third power. All right, now in the video, if you were listening to the sound when you watched it, all right, that blinking cursor is still up there in the three. It's in the exponent. So I don't want to just randomly start hitting the minus button. All right, I need to arrow to the right, need to arrow down so that that flashing cursor comes down here where it's supposed to be when I put the minus sign in. All right, and then the X and then the, what was it, plus one. All right, after you put the equation in, all right, then we do what? We go look at the graph. So initially, I don't just hit graph. You can just hit graph, but I usually like to zoom and then six, zoom six, because that zoom standard, that just puts that standard graphing window in. So instead of just hitting graph, I will zoom six every time. All right, now, if we're using the zero function, because this equation was set equal to zero, all right, first off, just to answer the question, how many times does it cross the x-axis? Once, so that means I've got one real solution, all right? There's probably two more solutions since it was an x to the third, and they're going to be imaginary, but we're only trying to find real ones, okay? So what's the key sequence to get to the intersect function? We have to hit what two keys? Yeah, to get to the calc. So you got to do the second calc button. So there's the second button and then the calc button. All right. Then it gives you your, your menu. That is your menu regardless. Even if we were doing the intersect method, all right, that second calc, second trace button will get you here. We want the zero method because it was, the equation was set equal to zero and it's crossing the x-axis. So I'm going to select two. You can arrow down, select two. You get that blinky cursor. All right, kind of hard to see, but right there you get a blinky cursor and you get the question in that bottom left-hand corner, left bound. Okay, you got to think of this graph being read left to right. If this is the answer, the left-hand side would be down here to the left of it. So I'm going to arrow and it doesn't matter where I am to the left. I just have to be on the left side. So you can be anywhere over there on the left side because it says down here in the bottom left-hand corner, it's asking you to find the left bound. Okay, then you hit enter. Okay, it puts a line there. Okay, imaginary dotted line gets a little blinky. Then the question changes to right bound, and we still have a flashing cursor. So we're going to move that cursor to the right hand side. And again, it can be anywhere over there. So I could stop right there on that maximum. I could keep going. All right, I could go anywhere. I would highly recommend not going too far away from that zero. So I'd probably put it right about in there, but you can put it anywhere. Once you decide where you want it, you hit that enter button. Okay, now it's asking you to guess because you're kind of helping the calculator when you're asking it to guess. So I still have the blinky cursor, so I'm going to move it around until I get it as close as I can to where it crosses the x-axis. may not be identical right on, but it's going to be close. And then you hit enter. All right, now, what did that give you? That gave you actually the ordered pair because see there's your x coordinate and it gave you your y coordinate as well for that point because what is that that's the x intercept it's the point at which the graph crosses the x axis all right but if i solved an equation that was all in terms of x we solve we solve we solve we solve we get down to the bottom it says x equals 2 all right except it's not x equals 2 in this case it's x equals 1 negative 1.32 you'd have to round it okay so what I'm saying is that type of an equation, if you see that in MathXL or on a test or a written homework or any other place, you can't solve that by hand. You've got to use the graphing calculator. Okay, so that's the importance of learning this. So answer would be X equals negative 1.3. Okay. All right, now I'm going to give you, I'm going to put it in. So I'm going to do second quit or second mode to get away from my graph, all right? That just gets you back to your blank screen a lot. All right, let's put one of the fraction ones in, but let's not get too carried away. And let's do the other method, okay? So let's, I'm gonna write the equation on the board. Let's do a one-fourth x to the third, and then minus a five x 
equals, let's try a one-fifth x squared on the right-hand side there, and then a minus 4. All right, so the equation is not set equal to 0. The equation is not set equal to 0, so that means we're going to use the intersect function. So I'm going to go back to that y equals. I have to, at this point, clear out what's there, so I can hit the clear button. And then per the equation that I wrote on the board, now you got to get those fractions in there. Okay, um, alpha y equals is the shortcut to get to your fractions. I just want an ordinary fraction there, so I can hit that one button. And then it's a one-fourth, so we'll put a one in, arrow down, get the four. And again, pay attention to where that blinking cursor is. I've got an arrow to the right to make that coefficient there, actually the coefficient, and then my variable. X raised to the third. Again, I'm going to arrow to the right to make sure I put the equation in right. All right, a minus, and then a five and an X. So that's everything that was on the left-hand side of the equation. The one-fourth, X to the third, minus minus. 5x. All right, now I'm going to arrow down and put into my second equation what was on the right-hand side. So your alpha y equals, again, I'm pulling up that fraction notation. It was a one-fifth. I'm going to arrow to the right. This time it's an x squared. So I can do x caret 2. I can also press the x. And then over here there, on the left-hand side of the calculator, Right here, there is an x squared, so I can press that x squared, and it just does it right away. I don't have to worry about arrowing to the right or down to get back where I need to finish typing. And then I can do a minus 4. All right, again, you can just hit graph. I don't. I always choose zoom 6 or zoom standard. And then we have to look and see what we got going on here. Okay, so that was about what I anticipated. All right. Did everybody's picture match that? Could you get that picture from the graph? Now, it's the intersect function, right? Intersect. How many times do those two graphs intersect each other? Three times, okay? They intersect right here, over here on the left in a negative place, intersect right here, which would be somewhere close to one, and then over here, but they're all gonna be decimals. You have to, to find the solutions to this, you have to do the intersect function three times because you got to find all three of them. So do it systematically. Do the intersect method on this first one. Do the intersect method on the middle one. And then do the intersect method on that one. And I don't know, let's round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so I'll pause just a minute and then I will start working. You go ahead and start on that first one, then do the middle one, then do the last one. And I'll pause, give you a minute to get ahead of me. All right, I started after you did, so hopefully you were able to do it as quickly as I was. Okay, so I found this first one on the left. All right, up here on the board, I've written negative 4.47. All right, how many people got negative 4.47? Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, when I tried the middle one right here, I got 0. 0.8. How many people got 0. 0.8? Okay, that looks pretty good. And then when I did the last one, I got a 4.47. So positive, how many people got that one? Okay, so then in, I left this one in the window so you can see those X values. All right.